I open the 23rd session of the trial. Dr. Sabatius, we have received four requests for hearing witnesses who are now abroad. And I see that, sir, you gave the Attorney General a copy of these requests. We shall deal with these requests at the beginning of this afternoon's session. And Mr. Hosner will then be prepared to reply to these requests. Herr Präsident, darf ich noch einen Einwand vorbringen gegen die Fortsetzung der Vernehmung dieses Zeugen, der im Zeugenstand war? Die Aussagen des Zeugen können von großer Bedeutung für die Feststellung der geschichtlichen Wahrheiten, der geschichtlichen Vorgänge sein. Für das gerichtliche Verfahren waren diese Aussagen bisher unerheblich, da sie mit der Verantwortung des Angeklagten in keinen Zusammenhang zu bringen waren. Das es kommt noch eins hinzu. Die Vorgänge, die geschildert wurden, sind bereits von anderen Zeugen dargelegt. Insbesondere sind sie vermutlich auch in dem polnischen Bericht ausführlich enthalten, sodass diese Aussagen eine Wiederholung sind. Dr. Ich bin daher, bin daher der Ansicht, dass die weitere Vernehmung des Zeugen als unerheblich zurückgewiesen werden soll, soweit nicht der Herr Generalstaatsanwalt darlegt, inwiefern die weiteren Aussagen von Bedeutung sein sollen. Ich habe... Bitte. Defense Counsel, Mr. Presiding Judge. Will I be permitted to make one further reservation against hearing the words of this current witness? The testimony is perhaps has great significance from the point of view of its historical importance of the historical process, but to the judicial, judicial investigation it is not relevant because it bears no connection to the responsibility of the accused. I shall say this too, these same things have been said and proved here by other witnesses and documents, uh, therefore it is my view, uh, yes we also have that Polish historical report, therefore I think there is repetition here and we should uh, not admit, we should not accept this testimony as admissible unless the Attorney General points to important things which are new in this testimony. Nun noch aussagen soll, <lacht> nämlich über die Aktion 1005 durch den Sturmbahnführer Blobel. Diese Aktion 1005 befasste sich mit der Beseitigung der Spuren der Vernichtungsaktionen. Wesentlich kann doch nur sein, der Umstand, inwieweit der Angeklagte mit Blobel irgendwie in Verbindung gestanden hat, so dass eine Verantwortung für dessen Daten jedem Angeklagten zur Last gelegt werden könnte. The Attorney General has uh, pointed out that uh, in the further course of this testimony, the witness will speak about Operation 1005 of Sturmbannführer Globel, an action which uh, was designed to remove the tracks of the extermination actions. Now, I think the only uh, significant circumstances here could be to what extent there was, if there was any connection between the accused and this man, Global. The Aufgaben des Sturmbannführers Global und die Durchführung der Aufgaben könnte als richtig unterstellt werden. The tasks which Sturmbannführer Blobel had and the execution of these tasks, this one can assume, of course, is correct as stated.
Mr. Hausner, I have proved so far that Nazi Germany decided at a certain stage to exterminate, physically exterminate all the Jews under its occupation and jurisdiction. I have proved that the man appointed to be in charge of carrying out these orders was Heydrich and that Heydrich in turn appointed the accused. That has been proved. Therefore, the claim by the defense is that whatever Whatever happened by dint of that decision and under that supervision to exterminate and annihilate the Jews, all that is relevant. And the accused, it applies to the accused and he will have to stand trial for that and answer for that, if he has any answer. B. We have proved that Eastern Galicia became part of the government general. We also proved that at the Vanze conference it had been agreed that the execution of the so-called final solution in the area of the government general is a matter of the chief right security office the RHSA, the chief of the Jewish department there, Adolf Eichmann. It is quite relevant. This is what we are accusing him of. Part of those millions are one half million Jews who did reside in Galicia. This is part of the accusation, and I have to prove it. The onus of the, bur the burden of the proof is on me, and this is the witness for that area. Three, <coughs> our argument is that there was a criminal conspiracy to exterminate Jewry between the accused and others. And this is how we formulated our indictment, always we said together with others. We shall argue that one was quite capable of sitting in Berlin and still be responsible for exterminating the Jews in Lvov if this happened through this very same conspiracy. That's as far as the extermination is concerned. And with regard to this covering up of the tracks, our argument is that the accused was the superior of Globus, and he was, didn't have so high a rank as the uh, defense argued, incidentally, who was the Standartenführer. The court will find this in a document which has already been submitted, T84, it's Vislitseni's report. We shall prove it through three additional documents. This contact between Adolf Eichmann and Nobel, who was in charge of these Einsatzkommandos, these task forces, 1005. <coughs> Therefore, whatever the witness has said and whatever he will say is quite relevant, and I beg to be permitted to continue presenting this witness. The presiding judge, a ruling, decision number 13, we believe that the testimony of witness Wells is relevant and pertinent to the course of the trial. The question that is here to be decided is the question of the personal responsibility of the accused for actions described in the indictment. 
In this connection, the prosecution must prove, first of all, that such acts were indeed committed and be the accused's responsibility. According to criminal procedure applying to this trial, such questions cannot be taken out even by agreement of both sides. Nevertheless, we assume that the prosecution will pay attention to the declaration made by the defense counsel that he will not dispute this or that fact concerning the general background of the matter and will therefore restrict the extent of its proof accordingly. Ken? Mr. Hausner. Dr. Wells, please. כי תזמורת הייתה גם ביולק וגם בבריגדת המוות וגם במחנה הריכוז בכל אחד משלושת המקומות האלה מצאתי תזמורת ויש להניח אם כן שהיה בכך, הייתה זאת הכוונה מרכזית. לפני שנמשיך, דוקטור וולס, הנה שמענו שראית כל משפחתך מתים לפניך. כיצד היה בך העוז? כיצד עמדת בפני כך והמשכת? והמשכת? It was a will of responsibility that somebody has to tell and to tell the world to be the remaining part and tell the will of returning exactly that the idea of the whole Nazism was to kill all the Jews. So we have a responsibility somehow to withstand this idea and to be alive. It was not, no, none of us, which will be shown later, had any interest that he or the second man, it was always an idea, who will be the best to survive and the others will go to that only to shield one man so that at least somebody survives of all of these as times. <laughs> Now, on June 15, 1943, 40 people were taken out of the Anovska camp allegedly for road building. Yes. Who were among them? Yes. On the 19th of June, 1943, But this was not for road building, it was the death brigade, the Zonda Commando 1005. What was the job of this commando? The job of this commander was to erase any sign of the murdering of the people by the Nazis. What did you have to do? We, we used to uncover all the graves that were people killed during the last few uh, uh, three years and uncover, take out the bodies, make up, make up pious and burn these bodies, uh, grind the bones, pick out all the valuables in the, in the ashes, like gold teeth, rings, and so on, separate them. After grinding the bones, we used to put out the ashes in the air so they disappear, plant over the graves back, 
feedback uh, plans so nobody can recognize when ever it was there in grade. In addition to it, in addition to it, when לבל יימצא, לכסות שוב את הקברים, ובלבד שלא יישאר זכר וסימן. לשתול עליהם. ועל הקברים שתלנו שתילים. In addition to it, they used to bring new people, new victims. They were shot there. They got undressed there. They were shot there. And we had to burn these new bodies too. נוסף על הגביעות שכבר היו בקברים, היו מוסיפים ומביאים אנשים חיים. היינו משליכים אל המוקד, החלה לעיתים גבייה זו או אחרת זועקת וצורחת בתוך הישרפה באש. Commanders of the commando. Yes. Uh, and with gasoline and oil. Gasoline and oil <laughs> and wood, piles of wood. A grinding machine. And uh, you have to do your job very carefully and very efficiently, that nothing should be left of anybody, yes. of any cause. Yes, it was even looked in the ground of any hair or piece that is left, a piece of bone that was left and was picked out, and even the pieces of paper and everything was banned. What is awesome? or pisat niyar, hakol misraf. What sort of a grinding machine was that? It was like a cement machine that was running around, a big cement machine was inside big heavy steel balls that were, and the bones were put in from one side, and when these turns, the balls were hitting. The bones the, or the bodies? No, the steel balls were hitting the bones. The bones, the bones, the bones were. As the fire burned the bodies, some of the, of the parts of the body were, was burned to ashes. This went to the ash colo uh, colony, and the ash co colony sipped through what was remaining in the sips. The sips were like sips that we use for flour, to sip flour. And, when, and what was left in this area, it was put into the grinding machine, and the grinding machine grinded them and again got out. The first was looked up of any gold or platinum is in it. This was picked out and afterwards went to the grinding machine. <laughs> והיו שם שבטים האומרים כי הכניסה אסורה בהחלט, כל הנכנס ייירה בפקודת גנרל האס אס קצמן. We were normally located in a ravine, all around us, in a ravine, all around us were mountains, and on top of the mountains were standing guards, and our small tent where we lived was surrounding a, a surrounded again by wire. Everything 
so who get right time. In this ravine was also the Brandstelle as well as the ash colonna, all the work was done in the ravine. Ha moked tur ha eifer kol ha avoda ha kol itrakez boto machtesh. But even with this deep ravine, normally the fire was seen in quite a few kilometers away when we started a fire. At the time of the uprising, we were already 118 people, but we were guarded by around 100 and 118, and we were guarded by 120. Shoppers of the 23rd Battalion with the headquarters in Tarnopol. אנחנו היינו בערך כמאה או שמונה עשר איש בשעת המרידה, היו שומרים עלינו כמאה ועשרים אנשי השופו, משטרת החסות, מן היחידה, מן הגדוד העשרים ושלושה מטרנופול. The people, like these two thousand people, were brought up on the top of the hill. Now they were in tracks, and each track 50 people, sometimes 40 to 50 people. And they were first coming down and first had to take out their eyeglasses, shoes, socks. Next, they went a few hundred feet farther. They had to take off their clothing. And afterwards, they were brought to a place near the Brandstelle, so they didn't have to be carried too far to the fire. And there, they stood up in the line, and with a machine gun pulled, and they were, mostly of them were dead. Who made, who made the shooting? The shooting... How many people were moving to the side of the Morad, to the side of the Giv'a, in the middle of the Masai, every Masai, about 40 to 50 people, and they came from the Masai, נצטוו להסיר משקפיים, נעליים וגרביים. הלכו למרחק מה? בערך שלושים מטר. אחר כך נצטוו להסיר בגדיהם, ועוד הוסיפו ללכת עד לקרבת המוקד, כדי שלא יצטרכו לשאת את גביותיהם אחר כך למרחק רב מדי. הועמדו בשורות. קבוצות קבוצות ובמכונות ירייה נורו ורובם אף נהרגו מיריות האלה. The shooting normally was done by the SD people. מי היה מבצע את הירייה? היו יורים בהם בדרך כלל אנשי ה-SD. Now tell me, there weren't many guards guarding 2,000 people. Why did all these people go to be shot? Why didn't they try at least to resist? to hurt their murderers before they were done. But I more than likely, there were no soldiers, and there were 2,000 people who were the victims. Why did they not try to stand in front of their victims, at least to hit them? Why did they go to the hospital to get them? First of all, it was never 2,000 people together. They would bring them 40 or 30. 35 or 50 and bring them and shot the next guns the next track and always 40. In percentage wise or that there were a lot of guards in percentage to each group not against the 2000. But secondly it was in the beginning one had somebody to lose all the time worried by it for his family. At this time in 43 Nobody ever anymore cared. He was always one of the last, lost everybody. And only to get some torches, and the torches were much more for these people than their death, because the life didn't mean any more to them. You mean they wanted death without torture? To get it over. To get it over. Because in certain cases, when we used to bring women and children very often these women will throw in the children and jump in themselves into the fire before even it was time to shoot. But in cases where a mother 
One time a mother came up with her child and when she undressed, she spit in the face of this SD man. They took the child on the legs, knocked the head against a tree and put it in into fire and her, they hanged on her feet. The other women seeing this said to themselves, what for? And this happened quite a few times where the, uh, it was this, especially for mothers not to undress children. Yes. We cut the pair shopo and choked him, these two people, while he bent down for the pair, pair shoes. One of the men cut him over the neck, choked him, took away, but he, this man that tried to choke him, was a little too weak. And, he scre and the shopper screamed out loud. The other shopper started to run and it started shooting, but before they knew anything that happened, so we were out of this place and we were starting to run, but not all of us. Some of them wanted to die right there. Just וכן האיש האחד אשר הפיל זוג מגפיים ארצה ביקש לחנוק את איש משטרת החסות אשר התכופף אלא שהיה קטן וחלש מדי ולא הצליח לחונקו בפנחי יד אחת ואז זעק האיש בקול גדול איש משטרת החסות השני ברח הזעיק את המחנה והחלו יריות מיני ובי יצאנו וברחנו כולנו, ויצאנו כולנו, החילונו רצים, אולם לא כולנו, כי היו אנשים אשר ביקשו את נפשם למות ולא היה להם כוח לכל... היו כאלה שלא רצו... כן, 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 היו כאלה שלא רצו... I lost my wife, my seven children, and I would like to die here at the place where they were buried. Hello. He got him undressed and he lay down waiting until they will shoot him. There were people who didn't want to be able to do it. There was a man named Yehuda Goldberg, from the Vatican of the Poland, a man named Mahtaret, אשר אמר, למה לי חיים, אשתי ושבעת ילדיי נרצחו כאן, עמות אף אני במקום זה, התפשט, שכב על הארץ וחיכה למותו. Now, uh, my final question, Dr. Wells. Uh, could you give the court an approximate figure of the number of the bodies which were burned by your brigade? A few hundred thousand. דוקטור וולס, כתשובה לשאלותיי האחרונות, לומר ראשית, אם תוכל לתת מושג לבית המשפט, מה מספר האנשים, הגוויות, אשר נשרפו על ידי חטיבת המוות שלך? תשובה כמאה, כמה מאות אלף. אתה תוכל לומר כמה אנשים נורו למוות? How did you manage to take these snapshots? Razu jednego przez znajomych, którzy pracowali na dworcu, a dworzec Radegas był zagiertem. Pamachat kiesiąc, a nasim się awdu. When a people who were working, on się łączył z gietem, ale nie tam nie wolno było wchodzić. Awdu Radegas. They were working on the Radegas. Rade, Radegas, Radegas. On the Radegas railway station, acquaintances, there were trains ready to leave for Auschwitz. Once As a cleaner, I succeeded in entering the station. 
החברים I saw the shootings. I saw them being murdered. Mr. Hasnay, whom? You mean those who refused to enter the train? You mean you saw people being shot and beaten when they refused to enter the train? There was a hole in the plank, and I photographed through that hole. Hasner, is this one of the pictures which you are now holding in your hand? This is one of those pictures. And this too? This one too. Gamzut, the this one as well, on the same day, because I was there only once. Bring the address to court. Thank you. Your Honor, I agree that each one of these four people mentioned in the application by the defense have information about the accused and can testify as to matters which are pertinent to the accusations. Unfortunately, I must announce that we regard all four of these people as offenders under the law for the punishment of Nazis and their collaborators. Professor Dr. Six. Professor Dr. Six had a hand in the preliminary activities of the accused, the early activities of the accused. He was his superior, that is true, but in addition he was also the commander of these task units, Einsatzkommandos in the Soviet Union, and had a hand in their operations there. Therefore, should he come to Israel, it would be necessary to put him on trial here. I do not object this. I support the application. If the defense needs this witness, I do not object that he be examined in his place of residence, Judge Landau. In that case, I assume he will not obtain a visa. Mr. Hausner, no, yes, he will obtain a visa, but he will be arrested and put on trial. Judge Landau, please quiet in the court. This is not funny. Mr. Hosmer, but since I assume that none of these witnesses will want to take the risk, then I don't regard this as a practical possibility to solve our problem. Therefore, from a practical point of view, I say I support the application of the defense. Judge Landau, well, you understand, sir, that we must uh, be precise here. Uh, 
שמעתי את תשובת אדוני. כן, שמעתי. אבל הסנגור מבקש את החקירה הזאת. אבל עכשיו, הדפנס, לכן, 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 At most, at best, the defense can tell us what the witness will want to do. Mr. Hausner, I am now... I don't want to go into the formulation of the questions. I don't want to argue this point. I assume that each witness will be asked to testify only about matters known to him. For instance, uh, question number six proposed to Dr. Six is a very broad question whether the accused ever exceeded his instructions or contravened them. I think this should be restricted to say to the extent that uh, Dr. Six has personal knowledge of this. But I do not want to go into the content of the questionnaire, but about the matter of the principle. Dr. Merten. Now, Dr. Merten. Was the military governor of Salonika. We regard him as a war criminal. Without his aid, Vislitseni could not have, Vislitseni, who was one of the subordinates of the accused, could not have carried out, carried out a deportation and extermination of Salonika's Jews. We have testimony by Dr. Merten in his own trial, held in Greece, as a war criminal. We know what Merten said about Eichmann in that trial, and I assume that Merten can give relevant testimony. What was the outcome of the trial, Mr. Hausner? He was sentenced to a term of imprisonment, but released after a brief period, and today he is a lawyer in Berlin, and even entered politics in West Germany. Judge Landau, he was sentenced in Greece, Mr. Hausner, yes, in Greece, he received a long term, I don't remember whether it was 10 or 25 years, he was not in prison for all that time, he was released prematurely, returned to Germany, and I understand that he is active now in public life. Herman Krumey is in prison, as we hear. We can certainly not bring about his release. He is a serious war criminal to our mind. We have quite a bit of evidence about his past and his activities. And what I said about the first two applies to him as well. As for Fontaden, I have spoken about him. I assume that he too can speak about the activities of the accused, can give relevant testimony. Actually, I propose that all four will be heard before German courts in accordance with a decision by this court and in accordance with the mutual legal aid arrangements between Israel and Germany. If the defense attorney prefers for them to be examined by a notary or present affidavits, I agree to this too. I leave the choice to the defense to do it in any way which it prefers and finds convenient. So long as in each case we also have the opportunity of posing a number of questions to these men, to these witnesses when they present their cases. We prefer to hear their evidence, that they present their evidence to a German court.
Judge Landau, so what do you say about the difficulty which Dr. Sebastius claims exists in Austria where it is impossible to cross-examine witnesses? Yes, there are two problems. This is one, and the other one is that these people might incriminate themselves and they have the right to be silent. Now, as for the second claim, they have the same right before an Israeli court too, and there is no difference here in the legal situation between Israel and West Germany from this point of view, in this respect. Judge Landau, that's true. Uh, Mr. As for the examination of the witnesses, it is true that in this country there prevails a method which is preferable to the defense preferable to the system which applies there. But, after all, the defense wanted the entire trial to be in Germany and not here, and he would then have a case where all witnesses would have been examined by that method. Here, at least, he has the possibility of cross-examining our own witnesses here in Israel. Secondly, I agree after all, we must be the cross-examiners, not the defense attorney. And if there is any difficulty because of this procedure, this is a difficulty caused to us and not to the defense. And I am prepared to accept this difficulty and take this burden upon myself. But I hope that even in the framework of the continental examinations, if both sides agree, the possibility will be granted by that judge under mutual agreement to pose a number of questions, just like it is a practice here, cross-examination, Perhaps a mixed system of law. First, the interrogatories to the witnesses with the right to the counsels of both parties of posing additional questions. Mr. Hausner, I am quite in agreement, sir. I have no objection. And now, Mr. Hausner, there is another application to strike off, it says, two documents already submitted and admitted by the court, two affidavits, one by von Tarden at Nuremberg, both affidavits by von Tarden. Mr. Hausner, well now if uh, you want a reply from me, I don't agree to this procedure of striking out testimony. I think the court can choose not to attribute any importance or slight importance to these uh, pieces of evidence. I think the court uh, retained this right in its decision. It's a question of what weight is attributed to these uh, bits of evidence, if in view of all that will be said, it will then turn out that there was vital need to examine Pontaden and this did not come about, then the court will decide whether it takes into account these affidavits or does not take them into the account or to what extent it will uh, take them into account. But I do not believe we have this type of procedure of striking out testimony or affidavits. As for myself, I have no objection to having Fontaden examined and I also agree that the defense in this case will have the right of cross-examining because I I presented the affidavit yeah. in this case. Dr. Sabatius, one question. I have. <coughs> uh, what about open cotton and Hetel? Are they both Austrians or are they living in Austria? That is why you did not apply it to the court regarding those two witnesses? Hötl befindet sich in Österreich. Hupe Kotten weiß ich nicht genau, ob er in Österreich oder in Westdeutschland ist. Hötl nimmt zwar bei Austria, in Hupenkotten in Niederösterreich. I do not know if he is in Austria or West Germany. Court, that is regarding the two, you may be submitting an application later. Is that correct? Mm. So yes, I am about to submit this, such a request to the court. Mm -hmm. 
Ich glaube, dass die Behörden diese Frage noch überlegen werden, denn der Generalstaatsanwalt wird ja nicht allein entscheiden können, ob ein Visum erteilt wird und er wird wohl auch nicht allein entscheiden können, ob ein Zeuge verhaftet wird. Ich bin der Ansicht, dass das Erscheinen dieser Zeugen unbehelligt hier vor dem Gericht für optisch einen besseren Eindruck machen würde, als wenn die Zeugen hier nicht erscheinen können. No, I know. Mir war die genaue Stellung des Herrn Generalstaatsanwalts nicht bekannt. Wenn das aber eine amtliche Erklärung der Regierung ist, dann äh, äh, sehe ich ein, dass das Gericht eine Entscheidung hier nicht treffen kann, da sie äh, ohne Interesse ist. I stood there in the line together with my brother 
and on purpose, deliberately, we tried to face the muzzles of the rifles, so we should be shot through our hearts. Why? Because we knew that they shoot only one bullet, and whoever survives is not shot, is buried alive. And then they put lime on the, on top of the body. At the last moment, a group of SS people came. And they asked, "What's going on here?" Ten zamordował, że wyciągnęli tam 50 Żydów z bunkra i rozstrzeliwują zgodnie z rozkazem. One of them said that they had pulled 50 Jews out of the bunker and they were going to shoot them according to instructions. Więc ten dowódca patrząc się na nas powiedział, to są tłuści Żydzi, wszystko na mydło. Das sind fette Juden, alles auf Seife. Alze Amar ha mefakeit. The commander of the SS people replied, these are fat Jews, all of them are good for soap. And then they took us to a train, a transport train, which had not left yet. The loading was as follows. These were Russian freight uh, train cars, tall cars. There were no steps and everyone had to lift the other and put him into the wagon. All around there were SS people with dogs and I saw one group before they entered the wagons. In that group there was an old woman and at a certain moment an SS man set the dog against her. Pies skoczył na nią, wyrwał i kawał mięsa z pośladka razem z materiałem i z tym ochłapem przebiegł do tego swego pana. The dog jumped at her, bit her, clawed out, bit out a piece of flesh out of the lower part of her body and brought that piece of flesh to his owner. This woman, out of fright, she screamed and jumped into the wagon on top of the other people. They laughed. When we were loaded, more than 100 of us, they sealed off the wagon. Mr. Hausner, no, Dr. Buzinski, you knew this was a death train, didn't you? Why did you enter these cars? Answer, we were helpless. Our morale was completely broken. They had prepared us for months on end so that at, on hearing their voice, very voices, we began shaking and trembling. It was a veritable collective psychosis which one could not overcome. Zduszeni byli, a przed wagonem stali Ukraińcy, którzy pilnowali i stali Niemcy. Inside the car, we all crowded together, and there were Ukrainians in front of the wagon. Śmiali się, mówili, no, będziemy mieli dużo mydła i na gulasz wszystko jedzie. Wycachaku, wyjadłanu harbej sabon, now we shall have lots of soap, all are going to be made into gulasz. Mr. Hausner, Mr. Guszmiński, Dr. Guszmiński, you jumped out of that train. Yes. Question, you went into a wood, you hid there and returned to Przemysl, right? Answer, yes. 
We shall make this brief. I just wanted to have a few details. I just want to get to the end of your testimony. After some time, you entered the bunker together with another number of people. Isn't that so? And there was a Polish woman there who hit you. Answer. First, I returned to this Polish woman. I did not have anywhere else to turn. She was alone. Her father had been killed, and the other members of her family were transferred to Germany to forced labor. She stayed behind with a little sister, aged seven. When she saw me bleeding, and broken. She, she had been my neighbor earlier where I lived. She received me, washed me, and gave me a place to sleep, Mr. Hausner. And you stayed there until the Soviet army liberated Przemyshev? Yes. I first returned to the ghetto, and in the ghetto I saw this Schwamberger, Zbił chłopca jednego młodego, któremu dał 80 odeżeń. Przemali go tak na krześle i dał mu 80 odeżeń. Do you see, Mr. Hausner, do you see in this courtroom the little boy who received these whippings? Is this officer Goldman sitting right next to me? Yes. This is officer Goldman. Judge Landau, just one moment, please. Please stop passing that picture in the courtroom. It's impossible. It creates... A boy could not have gone on after 50 whippings. After 50 whippings, the man would kill the boy. But this boy survived 80 whiplashes, and he was then ordered to run, and he ran, and then he was. Poza tym widziałem jeszcze weszedł do jeden z gestapowców niejaki Reisner. Ta harka Reiti iść gestapem. Then I saw a gestapo man named Reisner. Który weszedł do getta wieczór na dziewczynki. Się nich nas la getto da erek. Who entered the getto in the evening in order to have his fun with women. Z chłopca żydowskiego lat około osiemnasto. Padasz tam nar jehudi kiewęcz mones. I also met a Jewish boy about eighteen years old. This SS man wanted to shoot the boy. Wyrwał mu rewolwer i przebył go najpierw nożem, później mu wyrwał rewolwer. Who hit na tail al haisha gestapo? The boy charged and jumped at the SS man, knifed him, grabbed his revolver. And ran away. Gestapo was but only a wound. They took him to the hospital, and now they have 50 Jews as workers. The Gestapo man was taken to the hospital. The Gestapo man was taken to the hospital. And the Jews were taken as hostages. 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 Twenty-five hostages were executed. And this boy, together with two others, and another one, they were executed and hanged publicly. Dr. Wojcicki, you returned to the bunker. There you hid, and this is how you survived. I think the rest will leave the rest. Tá bom?